Good morning, Trains Nation. Today is Friday, April 12th, all day until midnight. We are so glad you could join us for another episode of Trains Newswire Roundup. I am Steve. Hi, I'm Jim, and there is lots going on in the railroad world once again, Steve. Holy smokes. The yep. big boy excursion's coming up soon. Yep. You heard Get us ready. Right. If you've got some room on your credit card, Monday is the day because that's the day when Spike 150 and the UP Museum mm -hmm. and Council Bluffs put the very first ever in the history of humanity big boy excursion on sale for May the 12th. You get to ride one way from That's Ogden, right. Utah, up Wasatch Grade, which is big boy territory. Yep. I mean, it's really cool. It's Echo Canyon, Weber yep. Canyon. You go through Curvo that you can't get to any other That's way. That's right, to Evanston, Wyoming. To Evanston, cool. Wyoming would be pretty doggone cool. They're supposed to put up details on the Spike 150 website today, and we'll oh, grab yeah. those and share them on Newswire, too, with yep. you. But um, anyway, get ready. That is the day. And reiterate that this is not just the first big boy excursion in 60 years. Right. This is the first, first big, big boy excursion. excursion ever yes there it, there would never was one there was almost one in 1956 okay but if you read a blog post i put up yesterday you can find out details why there was trainsmag.com yes. Tra details on trainsmag.com okay yes keep it in steam but going from the big boy to the slim princess yep did you see this one yep i we did have, we have got exclusive video of the slim princess i guess blowing a cylinder looks like she looks like Durango she, she lost a cylinder head or something uh, doing a photo run by out, out near Cascade Canyon. Yep. And uh, anyway, yeah, uh, the videographer was there, caught it. And uh, it's, it's, it's never a good thing when you hear your steam locomotive sounding like a pocket full of change. That's not good. Yeah, not good. Clonk. Yep, what not was good. The, that clang that we heard on the video, mm -hmm. which you can hear in the video, what was that? I think it was probably the, the cylinder head probably banging around inside the, or the piston head banging around yeah. inside the cylinder. Yeah, it sounded like a bell from a mile away. It's like, ooh. You don't want to yeah. do that. That's not Kids good. Kids don't try this at home. Yeah. Jim, what do you got so far? Well, in Indiana, your railroad uh, passenger car choices are going to dwindle come July the 1st. Okay. Uh, Amtrak started, stopped selling tickets for the Hoosier State, which ends right now unless somebody comes up with some money. Indiana don't want to pay for it. Federal government doesn't want to pay for it. But anyway, the Chicago to Indianapolis Hoosier State will end on July 1st, and they're starting to stop selling tickets. Interesting. So, well, yep. at least they stopped selling tickets. They did. That's a good thing to do. It's one of those airlines I booked 15 years ago. They you can still ride it on the Cardinal, but remember, that only runs three days a week. Yeah, three days a week, three days a week. Yeah. Sliding over to Illinois, Union Pacific has filed with the Surface Transportation Board to have trackage rights over Norfolk Southern, about 200 miles yeah. from Missouri to Illinois. And it looks like, or from Kansas City through Missouri to Illinois. So it looks like that the, looks like that they want to get another entrance into their uh, into their Chicago market. Yep, they they said they wanted to get over to their um, uh, one of their intermodal terminals yep. over in Joliet, and that this would give them an easier way to do. So it's going to be really interesting to mm -hmm. see UP on the old Wabash yeah. across uh, Missouri. That that'd be very interesting. Illinois. Very interesting. Um, some international news that has. Florida significance, Virgin Rail or Virgin Trains is looks like it's no longer going to be operating in the UK, which was the big deal because Virgin Trains, which has the rights to operate Brightline, formerly known as Brightline, is now operating in the US but not the UK where they originated. Anyway, full story on Newswire. Kind of interesting, kind of weird how these corporate intrigues are going. It's kind of kind of morphing and, and yeah. re reforming and everything, but uh, yeah, it's going to be really it's really strange. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought so, but uh, yeah. anyway, we got, we got a good story from Keith Fender out there yep. trying to explain this whole thing. International news you can use. Yes, absolutely. There. Another item for you, uh, actually a couple items for you out of okay. the Shortline show. Uh, our own Brian Schmidt was down mm -hmm. there. Uh, covering the show for us. I've got a few things out of that, uh, what the STP, STB has to say about what it's up to, and, and some other news about some people and some changes at Shortline itself. Yeah, that's, that's excellent stuff. Get all these stories and more on Trains Newswire at trainsmag.com. Also check out under the Railroad History section. It's on the big black bar on top, go News and then Railroads, Railroad History. You'll see a lot of articles that we're posting on the Transcontinental Railroad. I got a bunch of maps up for you this week, sort of web quality maps that you can click on and check out the Union Pacific, the Transcontinental Railroad, Sherman Hill, and a whole bunch more, plus other stories that we've been posting. For everyone at Trains, we hope you have a great weekend. Good luck if you're gonna go after those big boy tickets.